think about it, it probably should be picked up more often because it's kind of hard to punish a swift play pick. I don't really know how you would directly capitalize on it. And uh, they combine it with a torture, which is two really amazing heroes for going long lane with. Yeah, They're hard to initiate on, and if you go on them without creeps nearby, you're going to be taking a lot of damage from those two. Now, I mentioned earlier, uh, for the last series, definitely, I've got some, some fun stats here, so just again, to kind of bring another one up uh, as it relates to this game here. Um, Rhapsody being the first pick, very interesting. Uh, the most played heroes in Carnage of Caldivar, Rhapsody is actually second most played, behind Torture, actually, who's the first most played. Uh, but Rhapsody, her win percentage, she has by far the highest win percentage out of all these top played heroes, a 72% win. Uh, Torture, actually, the most played hero, he's only at 44% win percentage, so kind of get a comparison there, an idea. Basically saying Rhapsody's, Rhapsody's a big deal, <laughs> for obvious yeah. reason. I think that has a lot to do with how people think when they draft. Normally when somebody picks up Rhapsody, the response pick is Tort. Yeah. And Torture doesn't get banned nearly as often as Rhapsody does. And I think the reason Torture has such a low win percentage is because Rhapsody has such a high win percent. It's very rarely that you see both heroes on the same team. I think you often match up against each other. Yeah. yeah. Also, another thing, you most likely always want to ban Kronos Puppet, and then it depends on who you play against. Reasons playing against BMG, so I'm fairly sure they banned Ophelia. Yeah. And then whatever other ban, but anyways, Rhapsody is sometimes that one here you want to ban him, but you can't because you use the other two bans on someone else, and then Rhapsody just ends up at, as the first pick because it's so damn strong. Yeah. All right, these uh, next year bands obviously coming up with the draft finishing overall. You got Rhapsody and Pat Drunken, of course, for a reason. Then Swift Blade Torture, and then Bubbles on top of that, uh, of course, for Bad Monkey Gaming over here. Limp more than likely going to end up with that Bubbles. That's one of his top three played heroes in this event, I believe. So does well with it. Bands Andromeda Gauntlet Slither so far. Kind of interesting bands for a reason. Taking out Andromeda. I guess uh, some Trilane presence there. I, th I think those bands are directed at a, at a potential trial lane. They don't want to go up against uh, a trial lane and then having, like, something that, that I know my own team, we do quite often, is we run a Slither short lane and then a Swiftly trial lane aggressively. Uh, and I think that that's where the, why they're banning the Slither here. They've been scrimming against us a little bit and probably expecting something similar from BMG. Yeah. I mean, it's really, it's really simple and really strong. You put a Slither short when we won, he... Kind of has to win because he's slither, and then you have a swift play trial lane, which is one of the stronger trial lanes, if you know how to play it. Yeah. And you have like two wins, nearly auto winning, because draft. <laughs> That's draft. That's good. Uh, Behemoth being banned up by reason. There's no slapped over here on BMG, <laughs> so kind of curious about that Behemoth ban coming out. <laughs> he's. <laughs> Uh, this is a good old memory. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Slap. Slap. Jungle, jungle <laughs> behemoth. It was fun yeah, to watch. He's an amaz amazing behemoth player. <laughs> Dude, Aiden, let's not take it too far. I sense something here. <laughs> I was being serious. I mean, he's been playing it. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's the one he's guy really good behemoth. that's been yeah. playing it lately. <laughs> Anyways, banned here. So there, There's Dr. Repulsor ban. You're talking about him possibly last game, but obviously not going to be seen here either. Because yeah, of that I ban. He's a strong hero against trialings. Um, me and Hanskin discuss drafts very often, and we we talked about how we think both Empath and Doctor Pulse are two heroes that are really strong if you're facing a trialing because he can just output so much damage over such short time. I think it's a hundred damage every four seconds from his uh, magnetic contraption. Um, so it's it's a strong, it's a hard hero to trialing against, and to me that's a sign that they want to go for that aggressive trialing. That is what they want to do here. That's their current game plan. Yeah. And unless they need to change it, they're not going to. Ooh, Panda. Interesting pick. He could lock down the Swift Blade while spinning. Perhaps yeah. some logic there for the pick. Yeah, I don't know, Matt. What do you think? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's mainly. You guys run it a lot. Yeah. I'm not the biggest fan of Panda myself, but we run it every now and then. But yeah, it's. 99% sure it's mainly because there's a Swift Blade. Otherwise, they wouldn't have picked it. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen... I've seen them play it maybe like once in the last few months, so I don't know how good they are They how good they are with it, nor comfortable, I don't know. But I think they'll show us. Hey, you yeah. think the creation of the beginning of the trial and error, Pandemonium was up there as one of the first. For sure. True, That's true, true. It, so. he, is really, he is really strong in lane. Like, out, out of the... Oh, okay. I think that's just a counter pick. Hmm. That is, that is probably only 
because they picked the panda there. He, yeah. he, the, the electric eye is going to be very hard for him to deal with. I'm not really... It goes through Shrunken still, right? They never change yeah. it. Yeah. You, you can also use it while being locked on by yeah, panda. Yeah, exactly. Stuff. Yeah. So panda can never really ulti this game. Yeah. <laughs> so Unless he finds... <laughs> Nice. Well, if Jonas plays it right, which I assume is the guy who's going to be playing it, then it's yeah. going to be at least very hard for whoever plays the panda yeah. Yeah. to get his ulti. At least long duration. This is such a reason lineup, though. Triple melee core with an empath yeah. and the uh, uh, healer support behind. This is. Do you remember IPEL be, uh, breaking? I do, yeah. The, the four strength heroes plus support. And this kind of reminds <laughs> me of that kind of a lineup where you just, like, you just pick heroes that are hard to kill and then you put healers behind it and it's just, like, suddenly... The, you go. basically just go all into the fight. Just everybody's always all Suddenly in. Suddenly, it becomes World of Warcraft. <laughs> it's gonna be hard. It's like it's hard to deal with. I think. Yeah. Um, I think even Fnatic lost to IPL sometime when they were running their four strength one Glacius strategy. <laughs> um, and I think I think it's kind of the same thing here. The reason has a very easy lineup to execute. Basically, everybody has stuns. Everybody can set up for everybody. They just need to follow up on each other. If they communicate well, target well, they should be able to kill heroes and team fights very easily. Um, and to really use the fact that they, like, use the advantage that they have strength heroes, I would have liked to see some kind of a minion hero instead of one of the supports. Maybe a keeper, even. Yeah. Um, just be, allow them to force the fights. This is a game where I feel like BMG, they need to dodge. They need to not fight, not take stupid fights, only take the fights that are their advantage. Their own towers, important areas at the map where they have vision and reason doesn't. And it's gonna come down to a lot of how the way they think around in the game. If they go for the right fights, if they don't, and when they choose to take them. It's really all it's going to come down to. Now, so I got a little rake here, obviously, but again, this, this final pick, Tempest, I mean, they snap picked that. that when, when it was back to their turn, they, they, they knew what they were going with, clearly, no matter what that final pick for Breeza was going to be. Um, so obviously, we're not going to see that trial lane coming out and everything, so just saying, you know, dodging here. It's, so they kind of changed their mindset. You think that they just got too scared? There just weren't good options left? I mean... I think it was a smart decision. They did the Swift Blade trial lane against the Panda isn't really going to be able to do much. Panda can just flick him as soon as he starts spinning, yeah. cannonball him, and they just man up and kill him. So I think it's a smart decision there for Manskin to change up his initial plan. And Tempest is a hero that if you're able to farm the jungle and the other team has no jungler, you're going to notice in the gold graphs how big of an impact that hero has. I haven't really had the chance to play him too much after the jungle changes, but I still believe he is one of the faster junglers. All right. I'm not 100% sure he's, yeah, he ha he has to be the fastest jungler, if played correctly. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know, Lee Joe, man. New, new yeah, jungle, I guess if, if, you, if you can stack for him and shit, I'm not sure if he can do it all by himself to be faster than Tempest, but... Hmm. Do you like Legionnaire, Aiden? I, I do, I think the hero's really strong. I think uh, it's hard to run him. But if you run him, it's super Yes strong. and no, That's I think my people, opinion. Underrate, people underrate how, how strong he is in, like, when he's ganking and moving around. I don't I think know if it you remember how early player. you gank. Uh, Do you remember yeah, the I guy remember. that like was, was he got level three and then he would TP to suicide lane and kill the support? I actually watched some of his replays because I remember yeah. you saying, "Man, this is this is the best legionnaire I ever played with." Yeah. He went like boots first and then he would tower dive you and spin off the tower and just kill you. He he, there was this like completely unique player in TMM. I think he was from Brazil. He had a really weird accent, <laughs> um, and he would he would dominate the high high MMR games it's without like even bad. doing anything that's conventional. Which was really fun to see. And this it's was also the funny. Changed. I think he was like 1800 at best. Yeah, yeah. But he had like 60% Legionnaire. It was talking, very unique. You're, it not, just you're shows not talking about Phil the Thrill, are you? No. no, no, no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, the Brazil. Hey, man. <laughs> yeah, no, that was, that was just such a really interesting. I mean, we used to play Legio about two years ago a lot in uh, our own. Our, oh, RIG. Uh, yeah. Quite a lot. It's a strong hero if you're able to get out of lanes. Yeah. But I mean, his problem has always been the early game. Just a quad lane top. It's shaping up to be that. <laughs> so why not, right? Move to your no. Uh, Drunken's gonna rotate over, but yeah, they're gonna go aggressive trial in his reason gaming here. Against the top yeah. side, and that's not... BMG just... have to make sure they do not die here. I think they're good. I don't know. I think, I think, I think they're good too, but if they die, they might get in trouble. Yeah, I hope Adro can award here on high ground. He had a ward there oh, last game in the Mart. same situation. Now it's kind of reverse roles. They're changing... No! Are they not changing lanes? Can't there. Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. I'm talking about the can award. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but I mean, they're yeah, changing they're, lanes. Yeah. Really smart. There you go. He puts the can award down. Bubbles should not die. And, oh, there he goes. Uh, I think that's roll. really important. That's uh, gonna roll. allow free roaming, basically. Oh. Oh. <laughs> the counter, counter, Mart. counter, counter. Can he kill the they're red ward They're hitting the red wards, though. Nope. 
Yeah. Now he should place a new one. Yeah, he should place yeah. a new one right away, exactly. Because if he does that, that's really huge. But there is no words in the shop right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> game mechanics doesn't let you. So, yeah, they are going to swap it up in the end. Bubbles is going to be the short lane top. Swift Blade Torch are going to end up middle here, actually. And then leaves Scout Suicide, of course, so. So, insane, it sounded like you, were, you weren't, or were you guys not a fan of this, or does this make, this make sense? Wait, wait, the yeah. lane switching? Yeah, the lane switching. Yeah. Okay. Definite fan. Yeah, that's not fan, that's not fan. Really smart. The, they shouldn't have stayed up there. They they could have been fine, but they were really reliant on limp winning middle and then rotating top and setting up kills for them. Bottom lane, actually. Torture is roaming all the way to here, and I don't know, I mean, I guess he's going to just ultimately they try to play babysit, actually. but yeah, they're not going to kill him, I would have think. No. Alec is actually a really strong hero, 2v1 as well. Yeah. Because he is just so hard to box out. And if you overextend, he will kill you. <laughs> if you, like, run with his shield and stuff like that. But he's going grip. I. It works with reason, because they gank and roam a lot, but I really don't like that build. Not a, not a level 3, 4, or 5 grip. Maybe 6 or 7. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we'll see. Well, Isn't I... it really strong in though? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. You, you don't have the mana to do it over and over. Okay. But I mean, he has a mana potion. But... Yeah. We'll see. Tord is still here, and they know he's missing. Yeah. I mean, you only need to do it a couple I mean... times, really, because again, the the energy absorption obviously gives you mana backed. So. You lose about a hundred mana every time you do a QE. Okay. You, you use well, you use one spell for free. Yeah. QE. Yeah. Basically. You use the grip damage right there. Um, who's better electrician, you or Zane? Uh, I'm not gonna brag on stream. He's he's really that good. I'm pretty, but I'm pretty he, sure the mock electrician Keizu is legendary. It's legendary. But it's like yeah. two years old. But it's he play, he, play, he plays a different electrician style than me. He goes yeah. icon. I don't like it. And oh, he goes grip. True. I don't like it. That's true. Definitely different. He's here. definitely the best in his way. That's for sure. And they play it really well with grip. It's more like it's their play style where it fits really really well. Mm -hmm. So that's, I would say it's tough to say. I will say, I'm like looking at this game though, as far as, oh, they're going for a kill on the scout actually. Rhapsody coming in. Jonas Fan had no clue to do they have any kind of vision. I take it. No, okay, they didn't bring it to us, so. Scout is going to be fine in the end. But Rhapsody at least letting her presence know in and going to keep Scout guessing here. She gets to grip him. Oh. Yep. There should be a kill. Is that enough damage? Yes, yes, yep. yes. Grip, 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 grip. <laughs> Gets the kill. Here goes level two grip. Yeah, very interesting. Level one's one thing, but really level two, huh? It gets a lot longer. I mean, I've trolled around in matchmaking games and like max grip and just roam. It, it goes from like three seconds to like five. It's two and a yeah, half. If, if it, it, it like works with your play style, I think it's really strong. Yeah. Yeah. And their reason gaming, it's definitely gonna work. Like if they keep on ganking every now and then, if scout is below, I would say like seventy-five percent, he will die. And he will be because of the uh, energy absorption. He's just gonna be able to spam that with pretty much no mana cost. So hard lane for Jonas. Apparently, Definitely. already died once, obviously. So keep an eye on and see how he recovers. As far as other matchups go, though, middle lane, drunken 16 and three, swiftly 15 oh, and two. Oh no! I don't know. He can't Bottom go for old. Okay. Uh oh! Is he he is in? Yes. No! <laughs> That's the power Dice, of scale number one. Send the courier through the trees. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's. You figure, you figure they would pick wars. up on that by now. Yeah. Especially against Scout. Yeah. I mean, Scout's one of those old. People probably killers. forgot about it already. Yeah. I remember people used to do it all the time, like send it top through the entire Woods family. Uh huh. Yeah, it's been a while. But Obviously, Scout's not been a consistent hero lately, so. Yep. I feel like Jonas would have a level in I if he for one if he wants to gank and two maybe if he anticipates the grip when he sees like mm -hmm. Rhapsody run up he puts it down and while he's gripped he uses E because since it still works I think it could be good but yeah we'll see if it bites him in the ass or not. Um, again, this middle matchup, Drunken Master is winning it ever so slightly. Torture has been doing a lot of roam here. He's kind of been bottom, kind of mid. Now he's going top lane actually. He has an invis too. Yeah. This could be a kill. I think I'm waiting for them level six. It should be very close here. Empath. Maybe after this archer. Okay, shell surfs in. Not gonna get level six. Will it matter though? Pandemonium's in some trouble. He goes throws up the cannibal. It does stun limp, but it's not enough damage. In the end, the takeover wasn't enough, but again, doesn't matter. He stays alive, and now he's level six in the process. So good gank set up. Now suddenly this top lane is going to be very hard for the lane in. He has a kelp field, and whenever any hero comes close, he can just set up a kill super easily if he has a little bit of lane control. Yeah. Um, 
and he should be able to start farming really heavily now in this top lane. And this is kind of one of the strengths of Bubbles. He's a hard hero to lane against with a with any kind of a lane, really, unless you match up a stronger one v one match to just beat him in the lane. I agree, and then there's a. At least I make the note about runes all the time. If you waste 10 seconds of your lane to get an invis, you will win another lane for your team. While if you do it the other way around, you farm a creep with and your opposing guy goes for an invis, he will win a lane for his team while you make your lane lose. Mm -hmm. If you get my point. Runes are just so important. And seriously, everyone in the game should camp runes and just leave your lane for just 10 seconds. If you get a haste, you get a kill for your suicide, he wins the lane. Yeah. If you look at Silkit, he left mid, got an invis, and now top is all of a sudden super hard to lane for a reason. They actually switched up the lanes because yeah. of it. Pandemonium actually doing some damage to Scout, but Scout returning, and actually here comes Bubbles, Kalfa ready to go. Pandemonium realizing pretty quick this is not going to be a fight in his favor. He's going to do as much flurry as possible, but it's not enough. Scout actually gets credit for the kill. Oh no, Limp gets credit for the kill. Anyways, the point being, they turn that around right there. So, yeah, as you just mentioned, they switch things up, and sure enough, Still not uh, I'm just gonna good. I'm just gonna point out he got a region rune and then TP bottom with full mana. Okay. Rune control, yeah, baby. Rune control, yeah. <laughs> it's Both their kills are with runes. Coming live, right as you suggest it. And oh, oh Empath, shit. you're dead. <laughs> Silence! Oh, the shelter oh. misses! Alright, never mind. Did Lim just misplay? Yeah, he just did. Did we just witness what? a misplay? <laughs> I caught it on camera. I like, I <laughs> oh like my god. Clip. I like that one. No, he uh, definitely a big misplay right there. I mean, they had a free kill for sure, but in the end. I mean, if he was a good player, if he was a good player, they definitely had the kill. Yeah, if his yeah. name was Fifth Lauren, he would have hit them. <laughs> Only a... Oh, Torch? Oh, what's Seal going on, Torcher? <laughs> okay, Rhapsody okay. runs in here. He does get the stun off, though. Yeah, there goes the Staccato's wall. No, wall's not going to be close enough. He's trying to get there. Here we go. St. Mark's gets in the angle. Pretty good right there. Going to force Torcher to run back. And he obviously goes Fucking Ice Ogre didn't hit him. God damn it, Ice Ogre. That was so close. This, the, yeah, I was I waiting I don't know if you know, that was like, he had like 4 HP after that Ice Ogre hit. I was oh, waiting for it, but, but denied. Damn it. But yeah, no, at BMG, they're in a really good spot this game, I feel. I, I was gonna ask you about Panda's skill build. He's doing the old school, like, bot build where he maxes Q. Recently, whenever you've seen Panda, it's been max cannibal all the time. Mm -hmm. And I feel it's, it's a smarter build. You don't have the mana to supply all the flurries to get the damage out. And I think you even do more damage by maxing um, the cannon. If he oh. wants to do all his spells, well, he can't. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he needs exactly. like a mana battery that's either charged or a steam boost, and he's going for a phase boost, so... Yeah, it doesn't make much sense, unless he like buys a battery and has it charged up. Yeah. I prefer the cannonball build too, yeah. but I don't know, maybe, maybe he has some reasoning behind it. I haven't played Panda in a long time as Same. mid lane. Yeah, Drunken Master taking some spin damage. Gonna be fine though, wall off coming out from Empath. And... Keeping support away. Drunken Master, proboska has been, I mean, sitting in the middle lane basically the whole game as a swift play for that matter, but I mean, his farm though, 310 gold per minute. My point is though, would you perhaps like to see him start moving? I mean, this is a Drunken Master, he can it's be active. Probus. It's just Probus. It's right? He doesn't move from his lane. This is the very Probus playstyle. Uh, he ganks with runes, he ganks with TPs. He's a very, I think, predictable player. He's very good at what he does, but it's very easy to read him and know where he is on the map. Okay. Uh, and when he's put it on the hero like Drunken Master, I think the chances of him moving from his lane are even less. So, oh, wow, they're go. going in close to the wall right here. He doesn't. He does have a touch. He's going to use it actually, and he will stagger away just fine. Wow, surprised uh, that they went so aggressive right there. Electrician's looking for a turn chance now. Running uphill, but yeah, I feel like I feel like Busk could have turned earlier there. Oh, no. It's yeah, they, this is once again same problem as they had in the first game. If they're coordinated there with TPs. Mm -hmm. If the team is there, that should be a hat trick going their favor. If Bus turns around a little bit earlier, lunges a swift blade. He can do it during the spin, so he doesn't need to wait for that to wear off. Um, that could have been a kill for them. They're going. It's take two right here. Yep. In comes the intake or the uh, ultimate from Bubbles. He doesn't have a touchable this time. Marksman shot goes through, but it's not enough for the kill. Torch should die. Yeah, now Torture maybe turn oh, on. Never mind. Cannonball. It does hit, but no. Again, numbers are still here for PMG. So. Sink's not going to go balls to the wall just yet. Electrician, though, he's coming in. Tep is going to be locked out. Can he maybe get a Tep's ultimate off right here? No, he can't. Now the burst damage just too much. Meanwhile, down here, Scout chasing the Tempath. But now, actually, in the background, Bubble's going to be locked down. He's able to go through, though. Song of the Sea. In the meantime, his other teammate in Seal Kid does get picked off. And now Limp is left on his own. He does have take cover, but he doesn't have Shell Surf another five seconds right here. Looks like he's going to yeah, be Busk is going for the flank, too. Uh oh. Oh, double damage, too. <laughs> okay. That's going to shell for the top lane. 
Yeah, he's gonna go for it. He he's, might gonna, he's gonna get him. Let's see if we see the god play with take cover. Uh, we need the god. Nope. He, he, can, he, he can kill. He can kill yeah, Swift. Swift. Double damage. Yeah. Look, 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 look at this person here. BMG already there with TP's now. Right away. Oh jeez. Oh no. From us, this is backfire. In comes a Perso. Out comes the untouchable as well. And somehow he lives. I, there's a lot of close calls throughout that whole exchange. Yeah. But he does get away in the end. So, all right. <laughs> yeah, once again, though, like the time it took Reason to be five heroes in the middle lane there. It's way too long. They need to have TPs ready. This is the time in the game where they need to be on the same page as BMG. They need to take those fights. If they are there, their heroes have the advantage. They need to use their draft. And they're just not capitalizing on the mistakes that BMG are making. Because there are also, there are mistakes. I agree. I also don't like that they they have one mana battery on Legion. Mana battery early on, especially when you guys when you're fighting a lot, are really crucial. Especially on strength heroes that have low mana pools such as Panda. If the fight is longer than, let's say, 15 seconds, he uses all his spells and then he's a phase boots 100 damage that runs around and does nothing. Mm -hmm. If he has a mana battery, he pops it, he gets another stun out and they potentially get one or two more kills instead of dying. Oh, the wall just a little short right there. He gets a flick off, however, in comes a face smash. He is just, I can't even see his life from this angle, but actually, okay, it is low enough. Yeah, there's a flurry. And down goes Jonas and fan, so they help us right on top of one another. But anyways, this is on the side. And the end result, Scout does get picked off right there. So despite the wall not being the best, and money doing an up chase, he's sitting on 1,900 gold here. I mean, I think what he's going to be going for now after the ghost. I markers. just hope it's not it's not a null stone. Like he's doing bot skill build. Just please don't do bot slide and build. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're not in 10, 2010. Yeah, exactly. Anymore. We're not 2000, 2009 even. I think. It was so long ago. It really was, yeah. Yeah. No, um, I, I think, I don't know, Mal, do you agree with the Bulwark here? Yeah. I think it's a great idea. Power, item power supply against. Bulwark. Power yeah. supply Bulwark. They're going up against a pretty physical heavy team. The only real magic damage is the bubbles and the torture stun. I suppose the scout ulti kind of counts, but the, the, the lower time damage that's going to come out of uh, BMG is going to be mostly physical, so. Yeah, I, I like the Bulwark. It helps both Panda and. Drunken Master. Now the boys They should just TP bottom. Skull's yeah. been chasing. That's, that's okay. Still no TP. Still no TPs. There Nothing is go. happening. Uh, comes still down. Bubbles reaction. actually yeah. dropping somewhat, but yeah, it's not gonna matter. Come on, Rose. Still no reaction from Wait, Reason, look like. at the entire team. Only, okay, Busk had a TP, but he was complaining about a DC. <laughs> Adro no TP, Alec no TP, Empath no TP. And no mana batteries. I'm disappointed here. Not getting those, those basic items. Only a power supply on Electrician. Good. Yeah. I like... Zane's items. Yeah, yeah. play the Greaves. They're good at least. Does, as he said, and usually the icon of the god is to follow, but... I really think uh, play the Greaves are really underrated. Yeah. They give you... You basically pay 800 gold on top of your red boots to give you 20 more moves, spin, 3 stats of all, and basically 7 armor. Because they give you 5, you use it, you get another 2. Yeah. And you buff like all your creeps. It's beyond me how it's, you... It's strong, every yeah. Every team should have either play the Greaves or a Saxton. Yeah. If you don't, then I'm sorry. You're doing something wrong. <laughs> uh, oh, scout doing doing the scout thing. Scouting things out. We're gonna find Rhapsody here. Rhapsody is attempting to do a pull, but guess what? <laughs> he's gonna block that pull. Yeah, he's just gonna sit right here, and Rhapsody's like, "Wait a second. I thought I was doing good things." So scout being the nuisance that again that hero can be. Definitely just distracting him, buying some time more time for his team. It's just really farm. So we that Swift Blade. He's got an Energizer here. Uh, not, you know, not taken off by any means, but that's 212 gold from it now. It's a solid start here. Pandemonium, what did he end up going for? Blood Chalice into a Mighty Blade, okay. So no power supply, but at least it does get the mana aspect that you're talking about. First, I prefer power supply over Chalice myself for a couple reasons. A Blood Chalice you can't really use to make, like, a power supply you can use and make a turnaround because it's unexpected. Because they think, oh, you have no mana, but boom, power supply. Yeah. You get one more HP and mana for a new spell. With a Bloodshot, you can't really use it in clutch situations because you lose HP. Mm -hmm. I think I, I have to disagree though, Mal. Like the, you because think? of yeah, because of how uncommon it is to see Blood Chalice. I don't think people. I think people are more aware of people's stick charges than they are of holy shit. He has mana still. Like oh, where did the mana come from? You know, with the Blood Chalice. I just think because of how rare it is to see that item, it has that turnaround factor. Could be true. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, it also I think another advantage of the power supply, I mean of the Blood Chalice in this specific game, is that he's able to farm. He has no really other way of farming, and he needs his mana to farm, so... I think Jonas is going for a cleaver here. Yeah? 
Yeah. What did he just buy? bought a sustainer? Mana tube. Or mana, mana tube. tube. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Means they're going for the farm game. I, yeah. I think it's a smart decision. The I think they definitely can. Yeah. There's no Especially with Tempest to kind of synergize too, to cleave. Yeah. yeah. But that's one thing I was gonna mention. Uh, Jonas usually maxes this arm over I, which I kind of like maxing the I more because it gives you some control. You can counter ward. Also longer silence, but if he goes for cleaver, I guess maxing this arm is just fine. His damage output is gonna be way higher than as if he's maxing his I. Won't, won't also, they're maxed out though. By the time he gets his cleaver. Yeah, most probably. And also, they're not looking for fights, so leveling the eye is not a necessity for him. Bubbles, speaking of Sackstone, Bubbles has one himself, so both teams have that armor buff aspect. The play to Gears League decides Sackstone on the Hellborn side, of course. Uh, Probusk is level 11 here. He is starting to roam a little bit. They were trying to maybe jump limp in the middle lane, but you know he has those spider senses. They're tingling. Maybe a ward of sight vision there and. Knows what's up, so I'm not going to be happy. What is going on in my camera? It's going freaky. There we go. Tempest actually finding Drunken Master, but not much action coming out of that. He does pop his haste rune, but again, still. So they really dive this middle tower. They're probably not going to get a kill with it. They are going to push in tower, though. And we'll see if BMG is still here. Aiden, um, are you guys surprised that the tier 1 top tower has not been pushed yet, but they're starting to do it just now? Tier 1 top? Yeah. By BMG. Um, no, I, I don't think BMG wants to upset the delicate balance they've created. They want to play a farm game. They don't want to force yeah. like, Oh, look at oh, the team mid lane. Speaking of forcing fights, here we go. Bubbles got a kill. Fuck it, he's right there. Undertaker Master Untouchable is up. Mitigating quite a bit of damage, but is it going to be enough? Is the question. Spin coming out from Swift Blade. He will Beautiful stagger play. away. Beautiful juke there from Probusk. And actually, Cannonball will be juked though by Swift Blade. He's not going to chase any further. You see the SS like right here. They're playing a little bit of cat and mouse, but in the end. He takes a stun, not a big deal though, because they'd already fallen back. But yeah, that was a solid escape there from Probusk. When it's all said yeah, and done. very, very smart play. He didn't use his stagger. I was personally thinking, why are you not staggering? Waits for the torture stun, disjoints it with the stagger. Really nicely played. Yeah. Yeah. So, he's. Also, another thing as to why I think BMG didn't push top, they're perfectly fine with just. Swift is like static farming top. They have Tempest in the jungle. And Scout is doing the same thing bottom. They're only giving up mid and uh, reason they can from the jungle as far. And the right response they did was they start pushing, they start pressuring the tier one when reason are all in the middle. And it's still alive, and they're probably just going to do the same thing again. No, I, I completely agree. And it's it's really what I talked about at the start of the game. Uh, how for BMG, it's just about taking the right fight. It's about waiting until they get that fight that they want to fight, and just they decide when the fights are going to happen. Because oh, that's reason a don't have. They can't push oh. fast enough to just go for There was a random dust and it must have missed Scout by one inch. Oh really? <laughs> it was right next to him? Lit literally one range. Yeah. He was running into the Legion jungle and St. Rooks randomly popped one. I was like, okay, he's dead. <laughs> but he, wow. What, what's the range on dust anyway, does it say? 1200, I think. 1200, yeah. That was 1250, really 1250. 1250, that was... Wow, he must have been like maybe 1300 range away. Yeah. That was super close. Um, he did have a regenerate as well, you know, the second most powerful regenerate hero probably by Dr. Pulsar. Sitting there. Torture, maybe? Oh, that's true, yeah. Uh, yeah. They still want to set something up, though. Yeah. <laughs> they do got a dust, but no, it's not going to happen. Do they have dust? No, they didn't have dust on any of these two heroes, so. I'm not sure if they're going to ultimately be able to get a kill here if they want. I mean, he's kind of hiding on the Pandemonium, but yeah, it's just not going to happen. Shut us a fan flame. A little too safe. As he tends to do I don't know. A, a reason okay with just taking the static farm every lane game? I don't. I don't think so. I, I don't. I, I don't, don't think, think so either. So. Like if they get that cleaver on Jonas, how are they going to lock him down? How are they going to control him? He's going to be able to split push lanes, however he wants. And Fuzi's is going to be getting bigger and bigger. And Tempest is not a hero you want to let get to his late game. The real, the, the the weakness of Tempest is at this stage. Where he's kind of like, he's kind of squishy, he has a lot of team items, his positioning is really hard, it's easy to cancel his ulti. But if he gets to the late game with a fresher and all that stuff, it's gonna be very hard for reason to go against. They have heroes that can stun him, but actually, no, they don't. Drunken Master can't bunch because he gets sucked in. Yeah. Panda can't ulti because it's too short range. I suppose the cannonball is their only reason. That's like the cannonball goes through, right? Yeah, Let's say he cannonballs yeah, in, yeah, cannonball so he, he gets cancelled by the Tempest. Yeah. But no, no, the but the stun goes off. The stun yeah, goes exactly. Off, yeah. Yeah. Um, so Cannonball is really the only way to deal with it. Yeah, and he, Panda is not really the hero you want to have no, sit out. definitely not. Like, BMG will win. If Tempest sits out and Panda sits out for Tempest, BMG definitely gets the upper hand. Yeah. yeah. 
You're trading your jungler for their one farmer. And then suddenly, like, if you're reason, you're in a position where either you initiate on Tempest or you lose the team fights. And if you initiate on Tempest, there's so much counter initiation on BMP's side that Tempest should be able to get it from Kinetta off. There's the Silence from Scout, there's the Kelp Fit from Bubbles, and the Swift Blade himself just running into you and hitting you. It's not gonna be something you can just ignore. Oh, the flank. Scout coming in with a flank right here, but no, it's not gonna matter. The Hellborn team had already Got the red back, boots, so. Scout. <laughs> yeah. Well, I thought, I thought his team was still chasing, so they were like collapsing on him, but yeah, it wasn't gonna happen in the end, so. I mean, that was some tower exchange thing going on with, with all that said and done. I mean, minutes lasting right there, but. Obviously, BMG pushes into the top two towers, and Reason Gaming manages to push in the bottom secondary and put a lot of damage into the middle secondary, so just a lot of trading going on there, really. Uh, yeah, the teams. but at the end of the day, though, this is just going to mean that they both split half of the map. They're both going to be more afraid. Probably Reason more afraid than BMG, because Reason's lineup, they're more reliant on being able to TP to each other. Whereas BMG, they're really mobile. All their heroes can move around a lot very easily. They have a lot of phase boots heroes. They have bubbles. who's probably going to have a blink dagger soon. And just in general, the mobility on BMG's side is much higher. And that makes a no tower game favor them more than it does Reason. Reason needs those towers to be able to TP and help each other. So he just bought a blink on Panda. Yeah. So I really hope they go for pickups. I do not want to see him continue farming with that. Because otherwise, he should have just, like, I don't know, bought something better for his team. I guess I do have a bulwark already, but like something else, perhaps. You think I just hope I just hope place? he uses it correctly. Are they gonna I be think able to make nah, but I think not. But there's a chance every now and then they can find a pickup for sure. But we'll have to see if they find those. Oh, we're gonna pick. Say rocks in a stand a chance right there. He's doomed from the start. A couple ultimates used, but gets the kill. And that's what Scout and Bubbles are able to do, of course. Speaking of Bubbles, just gets his portal key. So yeah, Limp, I mean, he hasn't had the highest GPM himself, but it's over 300 now, and obviously 103 helps. And he just to get the PK right there as well. Uh, something I've been thinking about, too, it's Firebranch's personal Swift Blade. Uh, Electrician, you know, uh, he, this isn't really the biggest purge game. His ultimate, it's, it's still a good ultimate in the end, but there's not a whole lot of things to be purging here on the Hellborn side, so takes away a little bit as far as his pow overall power, but and at the same time, like I said, it's still a powerful tool, of course. Yeah, I think the thought process behind it is that it bypasses the split split. So in early game team fights, or like around the 10 to 12 minute mark, if they were forcing fights, they could just purge the Swift Blade as soon as they're spinning, and he basically gets zero damage out of his Blade Fury. Yeah. And that's Swift Blade's main source of damage in the early stages of the game. Um, but they, they didn't really capitalize on their lineup. I talked about it earlier, how they had, like, the, the window is when strength heroes are at the strongest. Now they've farmed up their core items, so this is another window for them to go for the fights, but... Uh, I feel like they kind of missed their timing still. Kelfield is down right here, so... Yeah, they're just gonna push in mid, easily take it out, and that's the end of that, so... Good push coming out yeah. from Reason Gaming. Timing on Here's the problem, though. While they're, while they're running around us 5, BMG are gonna be farming on a lot of their heroes, and... Normally when you go push, you do it to get a gold advantage, and... I get that out of the two towers that they get top. I think BMG are going to come out on top out of this situation where they just keep all of the heroes on lane, just push, split push lanes with their Grim Cleaver scout and uh, Swift Blade in another lane and just get more gold than reason is from their five man pushes. Panda's bottom, but they know this. Yep, there's a flick. Face map. Cannonball's going to follow. He does have face match. Just not even need to look at the damage coming out with the floor. He pops the shark and hit too. As Swift Blade and Tempest are running in. They want the tower kill. They get the tower kill. He's going to one cost right there. There's the big Tempest ultimate as they pour right into it. Electrician. Or not Electrician, but Pandemonium is going to be taking a lot of damage. Electrician does fall. Pandemonium goes down. And so does Drunken. Yeah, they, they just they, they were diving into that Tempest ultimate right there. Got to know that's I mean, coming. Yeah. Yeah. God, like, people kind know, of like, people, no, seriously, people cancel TPs into Engineer Field, but they don't into Tempest Ults. <laughs> it, and Tempest what? is even worse. What? There was like two things. Either you cancel and you just abandon your panda. He killed a scout. It's not the worst trade. BMG got a tower as well. But now you give them, like, how much did they give them more? An electrician and a drunken on top? Four heroes. Like, either they go for the big play and panda just like YOLO ulti's the Tempest, but like the safe play or the logic. He didn't even have there, mana. He didn't even have mana for the didn't, uh, Yeah, then cancel your TP. There was no reason. Like, that you. I mean, that. Tempest was standing there, like, waiting for the TPs to go through. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think that was a big misplay on Reason's end. Like, there's no reason ever. You you see the Tempest there. He's standing, waiting to ult. It's just an unacceptable mistake, I feel, to be honest. Yeah, that kind well, of I mean, can happen. It really sets them back really far right now. Six and a half, nine and a half, and... 
arguably, the longer the game goes, or the more farm beams you get, the stronger they get. Yeah. In it's comparison gonna to reason. It's going to be harder and harder. It's going to be harder and harder for reason to catch them. Like, yeah. to find an opportunity to fight them in an area which favors them. BMG has con complete control of the game base once again, I feel. They, they're they going to be the ones to decide what's going to happen. Oh, oh, Scout. Yeah, he's in trouble. Red Force down. Staccato stuns. Pretty good stagger coming out. Will they be able to follow this up? Yes, they will. Dust comes out. And that's a tension on his fan. You know, I was sitting on top of this whole time. He, he was sitting on the Ancients for a good, like, 10 seconds, like, thinking about it. And then he finally went for it. And sure enough, Rhapsody happened to be running right into him at that same time. So it's <laughs> just an unfortunate time from Jonas Fan, but good pickoff though for a reason. That's what they're gonna need if obviously they're gonna start climbing back in here now. Especially what happened at that, uh, that bottom lane fight. So they're gonna push in this top tower and I don't think BMG is gonna set up to defend this or oh, hell, knowing them, they actually might. <laughs> they do have TPs ready to go. But uh, I doubt it. Don't have a lot of set up, yeah. set up puzzle box on Alec? Yeah. It, oh. Don't like? Not sure. I tried it a few times, it's like, it's not bad, but I don't know. I don't know if it's yeah. good in this game or if it's good enough. I, I think, I think at least, like, the way, the way back into the game for a reason is by taking a fight in their favor. Like, in a, a fight where they want to fight. And now is the timing where they kind of want to fight. It just needs to be not behind a BMG tower, not inside a BMG's base, and Congor is dead. So, they need to kind of force a fight without BMG being allowed to dodge as they want to. And the only way to prevent BMG from dodging is to counter their vision. So I think in that sense, the puzzle box is kind of a smart pickup. It will allow them to kind of take the smarter fight. But it, it I think the more I think about it, especially because I don't think in this game, I like he doesn't really offer anything. And I don't, I feel like BMG are never going to focus him. You think like, it's a good pickup too? Yeah, because let's say he picks up, I don't know, an item that makes him more tanky. I don't feel like he needs it because yeah. he's not going to be a target either way. So I guess Puzzle Box is good, and I hope he uses it to counter ward whenever there's not a fight. Yeah, I think that that's that's the key thing. Yeah. Use it to counter ward. Like I was just gonna say, like whether it's gonna be impactful in the team fights or not, it's kind of hard to say. But the fact that it gives them more control of the map, I think, is a big deal, and I think that's important. And that's why it's a decent pickup here. Well, like you were saying, Kizu, as well. I mean, his usual follow-up is that icon of the goddess, but you know, is is that real? Would that really have been the most efficient pickup this game, especially with the pace that it's going it's at? So, puzzle box definitely more use there. You can most certainly argue. Yeah. With that so, coming out to him is going to have that. You do see, obviously, some push splitting once again going on right here. Uh, oh, what? Drunken. That was a misplay because oh. he meant to TP first. He's going to go away because oh, he hasn't shrunken it up. All right. he, I, in my opinion, he, he no, shouldn't have shown it. He shouldn't have shown it, in my opinion. Yeah, because now they know it's down, yeah. BMG should go, in my opinion. Oh, uh, yeah, they're feeling confident. Tempest Ultimate is going to be going to five seconds. There's a big ultimate coming up with the cup for Front Bubbles. Spin on top of that. In comes the Protective Alley. But Tempest Ultimate's going to be up in just one more second. He has it ready to go now if they find the opportunity. But guess what? Drunken's dead, and they're going to be pushing into the base now. Yeah, as you said, Casey, they knew it was down. He shouldn't have shown it. He did. And now they're going to go cutthroat. He does have a buyback. But it's still going to be risky at that. Swiftplay taking some good damage. No buyback just yet. That's Swift Slash is passing out. Finally a buyback for Drunken Master. Swiftplay, though, he has a token, remember. And again, Tempest has an element of one. There's the Shrunken. And there's the element of one. It's going to get that token alive for the direction. Nice tablet out onto Electrician. That's his teammate, though, that's right. I don't want him saying. Anyways, they're going to lock down Swiftplay here. In the meantime, wall coming out. Swiftplay is dropping. Swiftly might go down. Drunken's trying to follow him up, and he is going to be able to. But in the background, his teammates are just falling. Drunken goes down again, and that's going to do it just like that. Wow. I mean, this game, it was a lead for BMG, but it wasn't a. They're just going to run away by any means. But after that fight, I mean, <laughs> obviously they were. BMG takes it. 2 nothing in the end. Yeah, the last fight, Panda, during his front end head up time, he got zero damage out. He he flicked cannonball, ran away. Yeah. Um I don't know, I feel I feel like Reason Gaming they the the key point in the game, both games I feel I feel like they lost the games at the same time. It's like in the games. It was the same thing, mistakes that cost them the games. And that's when BMG starts diving, they're not ready for it. They just don't have the TPs, they don't have the communication, they're not in the right place at the right time. And it really cost them the game against BMG here. In the first game and I feel the second game too. More so in the first than the second though. Yeah. I really disagreed with the, at least at the very end, showing the Shrunken. I doubt they were, I don't know if they looked top. I doubt they were. BMG, that is. Yeah. I don't think they saw him use the Shrunken. Why not just, like, 
hide in base and like say aggressive, pretend you have it. And I don't think BMG would have went for a straight up Rax push. They would have probably backed off. But and also if you think about it, Panda got zero damage up with his Shrunken and Drunken wasted his. It's basically eight thousand gold you just put down the drain because yeah. of either wrong usage or running away with it. Like you could have put that eight thousand gold in passive items like I don't know. Let's pretend the demonic and then abyssal. It's yeah. constantly there instead of having to use it and you just have to use those correctly. I completely agree. Well, 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 BMG, they take it two games to nothing. Again, no doubt the favorites even, you can argue, going to this whole event, but uh, it, recent gaming has definitely shown they can't compete against them in the past, and hell, game number one, again especially, it was, they had their chances, but uh, game number two, also the same story, but in the end, BMG manages to come out on top, both of them, and thus they take the series two games to nothing, and that means Bad Monkey Gaming, they're in the grand finals, and once again, they're going to be playing the winner of Again, Sync versus Rexars, which is set to be coming up, uh, scheduled at least in about an hour from now. Is uh, um, what we're I have at, but one question: Was that? Pebbles banned in these two games? Don't think so. Uh, no, not the second one. I yeah. think Busk has and should be on a free farming initiator. Yeah, I I think the same. I think Busk is like, if we're gonna dig into it, like he is the kind of player. He's really good when he gets to take off and. I talked about a little bit in the first game how he he doesn't really do much until he gets his blink dagger. He like that's his play style. He likes to farm it up, get the blink dagger, and then try and control the map. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's really only movement with TPs and runes. And when you put him on a hero like Drunken Master, he, he's not really he doesn't really have that item that he gets, and then just goes all over the map. And I think that's a bit of a misdraft to the players. But then again, Drunken Master is just such a strong hero. Yeah. But you you gotta you gotta put it somewhere. Yeah, I I just think he is. I think he's too good on pebbles to pass up on. If you like, wanna um, what's it called? Compare him to like Swindle's prime time when he played like Deadwood and Pebbles most of the games. It's like, in my opinion, he's one of those Pebbles players who's like really damn good if you give it to him. Like you kind of don't want to give it to him, but that's just my opinion because we've played against him a lot, and I think that's the hero he should be on, not a drunken master. But yeah, I was just wondering if the hero was banned or not. Yeah, I was trying, I was trying to think about, but yeah, according to saying it wasn't so. Had a chance, it sounds like, but obviously didn't go that way in the end. So, Anyways, that is going to do it, obviously, for our first series. Once again, BMG takes it two games to nothing over recent gaming. So, like I said, they're in the grand finals. They put the winner of Sync versus Rexars. And like I was saying on that, uh, that's set to be probably about an hour from now is the scheduled time. So uh, we are going to go on a break ourselves.